Ladies and gentlemen, gather round, because we're about to embark on a wild and wacky adventure, the porting of the classic game, Prey, from 2006 into the world of virtual reality. Get ready to dive headfirst into a portal of nostalgia, as we attempt to turn this gravity-defying, alien-blasting shooter into a VR sensation. Now, you might be wondering why on earth we're doing this. Well, some genius out there thought, hey, what if we take a game that messes with your perception of reality and then mess with it even more by strapping a VR headset to your face? Brilliant, right? The game is not open sourced, which was quite a problem from the beginning. However, there is another game called Doom 3 that is open source and uses the same engine. There is a Prey modding SDK that contains the complete game logic. A guy named Jay Marshall created something called Prey Doom, which is a mixture of Doom 3 and the Prey modding SDK. If you've seen Jurassic Park, you know how they brought the dinosaurs to life. They found incomplete dinosaur DNA and used frog DNA to fill in the missing spots. Well, it's kind of the same with the Prey. Thinking machine supercomputers and gene sequencers break down the strand in minutes. And virtual reality displays show our geneticists the gaps in the DNA sequence. We use the complete DNA of a frog to fill in the holes and complete the code. <clears throat> and now we can make a baby dinosaur. If anyone is doing Jurassic Park level software engineering, it's GL Karen. This guy has collected several games based on the Doom 3 engine and integrated them into a single Android app. Not all games run perfectly, but they are all based on one version of the engine and they are open source. I'm not sure if this is clear, but for Android ports, developers always need source code. Android is not PC VR. You've probably heard of Team Beef, which has ported several classic games to VR, including Doom 3. Once Team Beef completes a port for VR, they open source it, giving anyone the ability to modify it as they need. So I created a fork and started backporting features from the GL Karen project to Doom 3 Quest. The code was originally the same, but was modified by several people in several projects. However, I backported all the features from Gulcaran's version into Doom 3 Quest and I can see that it still works like Doom 3 with no visible differences. Doom 3 Quest didn't have DLC support, also I checked the difference between the original Doom 3 and Doom 3 with DLC. The difference was minimal, so I very quickly created a version of Doom 3 Quest with DLC support. Maybe too quickly, there were too many bugs in it that the result wasn't really worth playing. After I sent the video and APK to Team Beef's Discord channel, I was told that another developer is working on DLC support. I stepped back and labeled my support of the Doom 3 DLC as just an experiment and that people should wait for its official support. Only two games have been possible to port to VR on the same engine, Quake 4 and Prey from 2006. I looked at both games and Prey won my affection. To make sure I wasn't working on the same project as Team Beef, I contacted them and told them my intention. They told me about their new plans for a Patreon poll that lets people decide which game Team Beef brings to VR. People have decided Team Beef should port Quake 4 into VR. So I could port Prey. I started patching the Doom 3 code line by line to turn it into Prey code. It took me a full two weeks before I could run it for the first time. It didn't work at all. Oh, come on! Oh. Then I just copied the Prey code over and fixed a few places where VR integration was needed. Two days later, the first playable APK was out. Although all the optimizations from Doom 3 were used, the game's performance was not great. GL Karen implemented dynamic skyboxes and portals. It had some problems, but this feature made the game more complete. I put the code into my fork and the game became in some places unplayable. I spent many hours troubleshooting performance issues, but it seemed there was just way too much geometry to render. It turns out that for some reason, rendering the skybox triggers a render of the same skybox and it renders about a hundred times until the loop ends. 
a loop counter, and an escape to the least objectionable activity. Howard, that's brilliant. I'm surprised you saw that. The first versions had no 6 f motion tracking, the VR controller's joystick was mapped to the in-game joystick. The 6 f support from Doom 3 could not be used because it does not support walking on walls or upside down. It was way too complicated, so in the end I just mapped the player's steps to the joystick and adjusted the camera position to his height. The problem was that this solution uses relative coordinates, and at some point the view came into situation when the player had to turn his neck unnaturally. My ass! I can see! My ass! <gasps> there is something really wrong with your neck too. I would say so! I would frigging well say so! <laughs> I solved this by calculating the rotation error and adding that rotation to fix the problem. This turned out to work extremely well when going through portals where gravity has a different direction on the other side. In order to support multiple headsets, I decided to switch from the older VR API interface to OpenXR. I used the official meta OpenXR examples to integrate, but it turns out that the examples work great for simple 3D cube scenes, but not for amazing 3D games. I spent an unhealthy amount of time trying to figure it out. The problem is a combination of foveated rendering and multi-view rendering, which renders the scene for both eyes in one pass. Too bad this combination isn't supported on OpenGL ES which the game uses. For Unity Unreal engines this is not a problem, you can change the renderer with one click. For native games it's an incredible amount of work. You may remember Mark Zuckerberg announcing GTA San Andreas a few years ago. I believe Rockstar Games ran into the exact same problem. GTA targets the Oculus Store, which requires OpenXR integration. Fortunately for me, I don't target the official store and was able to use the old VR API on the Quest headset. After the recent Quest OS update, Prey runs smoothly at 60 Hz in VR. The problem on the Pico headset is that the game cannot use foveated rendering and the minimum refresh rate of the headset is 72 Hz. Ironically, this leads to a worse experience even though the headset is slightly more powerful than Quest 2. Running the game at 72 Hz worked, but the physics still ran at 60 Hz, which was wrong. I noticed that Dr. Beef solved this problem in Doom 3, so I was inspired by his solution and added it to my fork. It worked for the entire game except for one portal. This portal simply broke when spawning, which broke the game. I created an easy solution for it and everything was fine. But I forgot that people have tools to force a specific refresh rate on the quest, which broke my solution again. My testers have pointed out several issues with the port's game logic. For example, alien writing should only automatically translate when a spirit eagle is nearby, but this logic was incorrect. A bit bigger problem were the ammo cabins, which did not open at all. I tried to add the same logic as in the original game, but it worked very poorly during fights. I simplified the logic so that the cabin would automatically open when the player approached it. The biggest problem, however, was the scene where the player is shrunk down and a giant hunter is about to appear in front of him. It didn't work at all in the port. I recreated the scene from scratch. It's not as great as the original, but it works perfectly in VR. Another problem was the in-game weapons, in the original game the weapons are due to performance reasons modeled only from one side. LennyGuy20 from the VR community fixed three of seven weapon models, but the last four were too complicated for him. I did it myself, spent about five hours on each weapon. The result is quite satisfying though. The VR community helped a lot in shaping the port. Playing the game over and over again, I was pretty resistant to motion sickness. I found that the camera shake made the game more immersive. Many users, including active VR players, didn't like that. Another thing I found problematic was the motion control for the wrench weapon. 
I know hundreds of videos of people destroying things around them, and I didn't want another game to force people to do the same. But the testers convinced me that this is really necessary to have in the port. Now people can use the wrench to play golf with almost everything in the game. Of all the mechanics, the alien vehicle was the most difficult to convert to VR. I originally wanted to have it only on a 2D screen, but I shared one build that had it in 3D, and even that it generated insane motion sickness people wanted it. I saw the problem and iteratively tweaked the mechanics, and it ended up being pretty immersive experience. I knew from the beginning that if I didn't provide demo data with the build, it would lead to complaints. I created an Android app that downloaded the data and brought the user directly into the game. It felt quite native on both headsets. But then Meta updated Quest OS and the launcher stopped working. It was so bad that the headset completely froze after using the launcher. I found a workaround, but I knew it was a temporary solution that would break sooner or later. To keep the game functional, I integrated the downloader directly into the game. It worked great. The data was hosted on GitHub and available worldwide. The week of the game's release, GitHub started blocking downloads. This was a huge problem and there was no time to find a better solution. I included the data in the APK. The data is extracted from the APK before the game launches, unfortunately this means the user has the data in their headset twice. In summary, Prey VR is a great port, but for VR beginners it might be way too much. As soon as Quest 3 is available, we'll release an update to improve the experience for that device. I'm very happy that Team Beef has agreed to be the publisher of this port. Their port set very high quality standard and it was not easy to achieve the same. Team Beef plans to release this port on PC VR in 2024. And that's a wrap folks. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe faster than a squirrel chasing a nut. Until next time, stay classy and see you later.